CSTAT students. Today we're going to be talking about describing distributions numerically, and this is part one of a two-part video, and part one is going to talk about the box plot and the five number summary, okay? So let's just jump right into it. Let's look at a, uh, hey, here's a, 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 set, of data, a set of data. Um, I'll tell you what this is. This is from the 2010 census. These are people who were taken from the uh, Houston metropolitan area, and th these are their ages, okay? Just 98 randomly selected people from the Houston metropolitan area, and this is how old they are. Uh, and I specifically took adults, so 20-year-olds and up. Um, so we can see that this is uh, skewed to the right. We have a few, uh, uh, we have a tail that kind of goes out here to the right. And we can see that the center of our data might be, yeah, low 40s, somewhere around the low 40s. Okay, now, uh, when, we're, when we're talking about box plots and the five number summary, we're going to actually get very, very specific about what we, consider, what we consider the center of our data. And uh, here, the center of our data is going to be considered the median, okay? I'm sure you all know how to calculate the median, but just in case you've forgotten, you put all your numbers in order, it's going to be the middle number. If you have an even number, then you have two middle numbers, and you take the average of those two. So when you look at a dot plot, basically, you just count in, and you find the middle dot, okay? So there's the middle dot right there, right on 40. So we say 40 is the center of our data, that's our median, okay? We're also interested in other uh, particular points, particular measurements. One is the median of the left side of the data. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the upper 50% of our data and just look at the lower 50% of our data. Uh, there's our median. Okay, and when we take the median of this half, there it is, we call that Q1 or the lower quartile or the first quartile of our data. So this is the median of the entire data set. This is the median of the lower 50%. Here's the median of the upper 50%, which we call Q3, or the upper quartile, or the third quartile of our data set. Okay? And these three values, along with the minimum and the maximum, are what we use to create our box plot. Okay? So it's also known as a box and whisker plot. Okay? This whisker has the lower 25% of the data. This left-hand part of the box has 25% of the data. The right side of the box has 25% of the data. And this right whisker has 25% of the data. So that's really what the box plot do does, is it takes your data set and chops it up into quarters. And then shows you, here are the quarters. Uh, you can still see the general shape of the data because this whisker is really, really long. So we can see, okay, that's spread out. That means that, uh, uh, more of our data is going to be concentrated over here, so that means this is going to be skewed out to the right. Okay? So the box plot is basically based on the five number summary. That is, the minimum, Q1, the median, Q3, and the maximum. That is our five number summary. Okay? Now, the box plots that we're going to be looking at, however, are a little bit different from this, because the box plots we're looking at also have outlines. Okay? We're specifically, we're going to come up with a, a, a specific guideline on what to consider an outlier and what to not consider an outlier. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk about something else, and it'll be obvious why I'm doing it in this order in just a second. And the something else I want to talk about is ways of measuring spread. Okay? Now, we talked about how to measure the center of the data with the median. Now I want to talk about how to measure spread. Well, one way is really easy. You just take the range, okay? Just look at the maximum value minus the minimum value, and that's going to get you the range of your data. Another way is to look at the IQR, or interquartile range. And what the interquartile range is, it's the range of the middle 50% of your data, okay? It's Q3 minus Q1. So in this particular case, our range is 63 years, because we're taking our maximum, 83, minus our minimum, 20. And our IQR is 16 years, because we're taking our uh, Q3, which is 47, and subtracting uh, Q1, 31. So uh, those are two really good ways of measuring, of measuring the, uh, um, 
the, the, the spread, how spread apart our data are. Okay, now, the reason I wanted to talk about that first is because we actually use the IQR to figure out what we consider an outlier and what we don't consider an outlier. It's kind of a strange calculation, but bear with me, okay? So what you do, you take your IQR, in this case, uh, 16, you multiply it by 1.5, so in this case that would be 24. You add that 24 to Q3, and you subtract it from Q1. Anything outside of that, we consider an outlier. Okay? So, anything that would be lower than, well, let's see, uh, 31 minus 24 would be 7. So, anything lower than 7 would be an outlier. We have no outliers on the left side. And anything above, uh, let's see, this is going to be 47 plus 24 gives us... Uh, 71. So anything above 71 would be an outlier. And as you see, we have five outliers there. So what this, the way that we draw this, this whisker is going to go out to the highest data point that is not considered an outlier. And then you stop. And then you put little dots to signify all the outliers. Okay? And there's your box plot. Alright. Now, Box plots, uh, one thing that, that's, that's good about box plots, and one thing, one thing that's good about using the median and the IQR to measure center and spread, is that they're resistant to outliers. And this is what I mean by that. Uh, here we have uh, box plots. This is also about the same 98 people, but this time, instead of looking at their age, we're looking at how much money they make, okay? The income that they, uh, that they uh, have. And so... Here's, here's a box plot that shows that. Here's a, a couple of outliers here. This one's making, uh, looks like about $165,000 a year. This one's making about $210,000 a year. But then I realized, oh man, I, I misjudged this one. He's actually making $350,000 a year. So I pulled this dot way out here. And, uh, uh, and so now I'm thinking, oh no, what has that done to my median? What has that done to my IQR? The answer is nothing, okay? The median and the IQR are resistant to outliers, meaning if I take an outlier and I move it around, it does nothing to those values. So they're nice, stable values, all right? In the next video, we're going to look at mean and standard deviation as ways of measuring our center and, uh, and spread. Those are not resist resistant to outliers, which is why this is important. Okay? So box plots are also used uh, to compare data sets. Here we, uh, we're looking back at the age again of these uh, 98 Houstonians. And this time I've split them up between males and females. And so now I can look at these, uh, these data and I can see, well, my typical male, the median, is actually older than my typical female. As a matter of fact, the youngest male that I have is about as old or older than 25% of the women. This is kind of weird. I, I got a bunch of young women and not too many young men. Uh, on the other hand, all the oldest women, older than the men. Mm. Yeah, we tend to die off a little earlier. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, and you can, uh, by looking at the five point summaries and by looking at the box plots of these data and comparing them, you can actually come up with a surprising uh, uh, number of, uh, of observations that you can make about these uh, two data sets, okay? So, to summarize, box plots, medians, IQRs, the pros, well, one pro is it's appropriate for any set of data, even weirdo sets of data, even data sets that are really, really skewed to the right or really, really skewed to the left, this works, okay? It's, it's good for making comparisons and it's resistant to outliers. Cons, well, one big con is these are not the measurements we're going to be using when we do uh, statistical inference in the future. We're going to be using the mean and the standard deviation uh, simply because the mathematics of these doesn't lend itself to, uh, to doing inference. Okay? Uh, another con about using a box plot as opposed to the histogram or a dot plot or a stem plot, this doesn't tell you anything about how many data points we're looking at. Okay? When you look at a box plot, you have no idea if this, if the, the the size of the sample is 10 or 1,000 or a million. You just don't know, okay? All you know is the, you know, where, where is this quarter of the data, this quarter of the data, this quarter of the data, all right? 
So uh, uh, those are your pros, those are your cons, and uh, those are your box plots, and that's your medium IQR. In the next video, we're going to look at mean and standard deviation. Adios. Thank you.